Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is the Samsung Genio Slide. Let's kick things off and take a look at what you get inside the box with this little mobile phone. So, we're presented with the Samsung box inside and the top section contains the mobile phone itself. I'm going to pop this to one side and we'll come back to this in a short while. And underneath that top section we have got on this right hand side we've got a UK charger so three pin UK charger on here this will vary from country to country then we've got in this package here and this is rather nice you can actually personalize your device we've got an extra black back with a nice design underneath this uh, scratch protection film so we've got a Sort of a nice design to that. And then we've also got a second one. So including the one that's already on the phone, you've got three backs in total. And this one here is a rather fetching white design with some circular patterns on. So really nice. You get a couple of personalization options in the box. In this package here, we have got a USB cable. So we've got the standard USB connection on one end micro USB connector on the other end. Worth noting that this is used for charging as well as synchronizing data to the, to the device. Then we've got a little uh, headphone kit here. Silicon attachments on the end there. And this also plugs into, so this is an additional bit here, so you can use just the headphones or you can also plug in this hands-free kit so on this end we've got the 3.5mm jack, you plug your headphones in there so you can use either the uh, Samsung supplied ones or you can use uh, your own which is nice. Nice spring clip on the back to clip it to your jacket and then we've got a little microphone here and a push to talk button there so you can make and take calls. Digging further on down into the box we have got another little pack. And inside here, we have got a user manual. So I think it's good that manufacturers are learning nowadays that people hate these user manuals that are on discs that are actually including a printed manual with things now. You also get some SAR information, some extra little bits from Vodafone because this particular one's on Vodafone. Then we get a little disc here, and on this disc, we have got um, a full user guide and also an installer to an application for Windows XP and Vista for managing the phone content. And then on this one we've got the same again, this is disk 2 of 2. And then in this little package here we have got some extra memory. Now the handset's got 150 megabytes of memory built in. Uh, they do also supply in the box a 2 gigabyte micro SD card. Now if you want to buy another micro SD card you can go up to 16 gigabytes in this handset. And then we get a little adapter here, so it's brilliant that Samsung have thought of including this. And you can put the uh, little micro SD adapter in there and then it converts it to a full size SD card. So you can then pop that into your uh, laptop or a card reader to uh, get content on and off of the memory card. That's brilliant. So let's move on to the handset itself and we'll show you this in greater detail. So this is the handset up close for you. What you get here is a 2.8 inch screen, 240 by 320 resolution. Now this is a touch screen, so you can actually sort of touch on things and manipulate widgets, etc. I'll show you that a little bit in more detail in a, in a short while. But as well as the touch screen, you can actually slide open the handset and then you get a nice QWERTY keyboard as well for your texting and emails. And this is actually very nice. They're nice size keys and they're also ridged as well. So you get a nice sort of tactile feedback from them. So nice keyboard there. Battery is rated at 960 milliamp hours. 
and in my tests with medium use uh, it's been good for about three days between charges for entertainment you get FM radio and Java game support connectivity you get Bluetooth which as you can see I've got that switched on at the top here you also get Wi-Fi and an AGPS built in too memory as I mentioned earlier 150 megabytes built into the handset and then you can add extra memory via micro SD card, 2 gigabyte card supplied, up to 16 gigabyte support. Now moving on to the camera, which is on the back here. This is a 3 megapixel camera uh, with auto ISO. I'm going to show you that working again in a short while. It's flanked by a speaker here. Top of the handset, got three, that 3.5mm three audio jack. Round the side here, got a little cover here for the uh, USB connection. This one here is for locking the screen to prevent accidental touchscreen input. We've got a shortcut button here for the camera. Around the bottom, nothing to speak of here apart from the little mic pickup. And then around this side, we've got a little lanyard connector here and also a volume rocker switch. So let's turn the handset back on. I have to hold that lock button on the side to unlock the handset. And I'm going to show you the camera first of all. So let's click that camera button to get the camera interface up and running. And from here you can tap on the screen. So I can change the mode from camera to camcorder. I can click on the shooting mode from single shot, smile shot, continuous or panorama. Then I've got some scene options here. I've got things like portrait, landscape, night. And then I've got sports, sunset and text. Then I've got some settings here, and it's here where I control the resolution and the white balance, etc. Over on this side here, I've got some options for uh, various uh, timer settings. And then I've got some brightness compensation. And then I've got a quick view button as well, which takes me to some of the photos that I've taken previously. So let's go back into the camera. and let's pop my little model under that I always use for these tests and as you can see the uh, lens is a little bit in the way of where I'd normally hold it so we have to make sure that you're not going to put your finger in front of the lens and then we line the shot up and then to take the photo you just tap this uh, camera button on the top of the handset now there's no physical noise uh, the only way I know I've taken that photo is that my count up here, the counter has gone down one for the capacity for how many photos I can fit into that internal memory so let's take another one and again it's gone down here so let's go into quick view we can have a look at how good those photos are so <clears throat> the accelerometer again as with all of these cameras, it's very frustrating. It thinks I've taken it in the wrong format. Let's pop this down onto the desk. It's still not going to let me show you it in the right orientation. So I'm going to have to show you it in this orientation. Let's tap on the photo. Let's go on more. And I've got upload to web. I can set it to wallpaper, go into the image editor or slideshow. Let's go back. Now I'm guessing that this uh, rocker switch on this side will allow me to actually zoom in but it won't so I've got no way of zooming in and out I can swipe left and right between photos but I want to zoom in and see how good this is so I'm not very impressed with the way that the camera application is actually working so let's go back out of the camera and we're going to go all the way back out to the main home screen now when on the main home screen, the idea behind this handset is that you can actually drag things around and put widgets onto your various screens. It's actually divided into three home screens which are uh, separated by these little tabs up here. So I can actually swipe from left to right or back to the central one or to this one on the right hand side and I can populate these with various widgets. And the way I do this is tapping on this little arrow button here. I can scroll to a widget I want, perhaps I want a calendar, and I simply drag that off and onto the page. 
once it's on the page I can tap that little arrow button again and then I can tap and hold and move this widget wherever I want now one of the things I don't like is this is a little bit fiddly because if I want to get rid of this widget I have to first tap here then tap the widget and then drag it back into the sidebar and it gets rid of it it's not too bad but I would like to see just being able to drag it across without having to first tap this arrow first some of the widgets on offer are things like Twitter and we've got a BBC iPlayer one there if I go into this scrollable list you can see some more we've got a clock widget Vodafone live widget we've got a Bluetooth Wi-Fi widget we've got some media playback widgets volume widget uh, something for Google we've got an instant messaging widget a Bebo Facebook MySpace so lots to choose from uh, so they do provide some extra functionality to the handset now we've got three little touch areas down here this one here takes me into the keypad for dialing numbers so I don't have to slide the handset open and use that QWERTY keypad for dialing I can keep it in its closed format this middle one here opens up the phone book and then this one on the right hand side takes me into my main menu and again when I'm in this menu I don't scroll up and down I actually swipe from left to right okay so let's go into the music player and I can show you some music playing we go into all tracks and set something playing if there was album art it would be shown here and then the music started playing I can use this rocker switch to put the volume up and down so let's put this up to full volume for you So it's quite a nice volume, although the speaker does sound a little bit tinny. Well, what I like about the Genio Slide are the applications. Facebook and Twitter are especially nice. They're not quite as flexible as, say, on the Android OS, but they're good all the same. I also like the instant messaging support, Google Talk, ICQ, Powringo, and Aim, to, to name just a few. And the touchscreen is nice and responsive. Very good touchscreen on this handset. The complement of apps and the instant messaging alongside that QWERTY keyboard uh, really do make this a joy to use. This is fantastic, good keyboard. Most impressive is that you get Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in such a good value handset. Now what I don't like, well I'm not too keen on the way the widgets work. I don't like this little arrow pop out system and having to drag the widgets I don't want back onto that sidebar. It's a little bit hit and miss sometimes. And the micro USB connector, which is on this side of the handset, is a bit of a tight fit. I find, found it very hard to get the charger out and that USB cable in for putting content over onto the handset. But I haven't heard anyone else complaining about that, so maybe that will improve with time. Now, I mentioned due to the, the price. Well, the Genio slide is very well featured considering that you can pick it up unlocked sim free in the UK for £190 if you go for a pay as you go option on something like Vodafone then you're going to get it for about £130 that's fantastic value for money it wasn't really destined this handset for the US but if you really want one and you shop around you can pick it up for around about $280 well thanks very much for listening this has been my review of the Genio slide Come back soon and check out more video reviews on the Geekanoids channel. This video review is sponsored by EasyDraw, making drawing fun on Mac OS X.